Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Knife Chats with Tobias. Welcome to a, another Two for Tuesday. This was an open tag that was started by Tom over at Knife Delights. As you can see, I'm not very good at doing a Two for Tuesday because, well, already I have five knives out here. These are the knives I have in the Winter Bottom Bone Collection. These are knives that uh, Queen made in China. And um, I've been collecting them uh, now that they're no longer being made. Uh, they're becoming a little more difficult to collect. I don't know if I'm going to collect them all or not, but I have collected quite a few. And I recently picked up two more knives in this series. Now, what we have here are, um, well, the Gamecock. I, I did a video on these. This is one of my favorites out of the, the whole lineup because, well, it's the Gamecock. This is also one that's pretty cool. This is the... Uh, medium to large stockman it's right at three and seven eighths inches long and it has a punch blade on there that was pretty cool they have another stockman in the lineup but it's three and a quarter inches long so i'm not as concerned about getting that one or not this is the barlow i won the barlow i believe from williams knife life and i really like this one um and it's the newer way that uh Rough Rider and, well, Smoky Mountain Knife Work has started doing their Barlows. They still have the rounded top. I wish it was squared off. But you have the uh, front blade, the clip blade, and then the back blade is the uh, pin blade. So they reversed those, uh, mainly because a lot of people were complaining that uh, it was hard for them to get to the uh, nail nick on the front blade when the clip blade was up front there in any case and then i got the two fixed blades these were the first two that i actually picked up i bought this one because it's a little burden trout really liked it and because i like the uh, winter bottom bone and uh, i think i did a video on this one where i compare it to my other queen burden trout and this one was given the name adventurer um if you notice, it looks like a serpentine stockman, except it's got a fixed blade sticking out there. And it's got these two blades in the back here. You got the uh, pin blade, and then the other blade is actually a cap lifter screwdriver, which is pretty cool too. So um, those were the five that I had so far. The two that I most recently picked up, well, the first one is this one. And this is um, the Half Whittler. It's a little bit of a swell center there, if you notice. It's got a little bump there. So it's actually shaped like a Coke bottle, except uh, it's got two blades on it, one from one end and one from the other end. And uh, the top blade is your clip blade. Uh, opens all right. Could have a better snap. I think I just really need to clean it up and work it out and everything. And then the other blade on here is a pin blade. That one has a lighter pull on it but a pretty cool knife nonetheless. But if you notice, uh, it's darker than the other ones. It doesn't seem to quite match. I'm thinking I'm gonna try and um, clean it up and see if I can uh, get that bone a little more brown and a little less gray because it actually looks more grayish to me, but it's still in a winter bottom jig. And then the other one from China that I got, so we've got six so far. And then uh, the seventh one is in the box here. And this is a knife that I would have picked up a whole lot sooner if the folks at SMKW would have answered my question correctly. And that's because it is a fish knife. And uh, the question I had asked them when I first saw this online, because uh, they didn't have it in the specifications and I couldn't find it anywhere. I asked them, is this a... Uh, a large fish knife or the medium fish knife you know is it is it on a four and a quarter inch frame or is it on a five inch frame and the answer i got was first i got the answer yes and it's like well that makes absolutely no sense and so i asked again is this a a, a four inch frame or a five inch frame and the answer i got was it's a four inch frame well it's not it's a five inch frame and if i would have heard that to begin with this probably would have been the very first Queen Winterbottom knife out of China that I would have bought. But because they said it was a four inch fish knife, I wasn't nearly as interested in it. 
I, I wanted the large one and uh, that's what this is and it's fairly well made I mean you can see the little gap right there in the bone and that is a gap I could fill it in if I wanted to uh, the way I would fill that in is I would take uh, uh, take a piece of bone uh, get it a piece of sandpaper sand it down as best I could and then uh, mix in a little epoxy uh, and then just fill in the gap with that and and then sand it down. That's the way I would do it and then just buff it out. Um, it's not that big of a deal and we're talking about a knife that costs 17 bucks so I'm not too concerned about it. But the uh, handle themselves look pretty good. I like the, uh, the, the way the winter bottom was done on there. And then you have the uh, fish blade, you know, the, the scaler blade with the cap lifter and then the little hook remover down here at the end, which is all pretty cool. Uh, and it's the old fashioned uh, uh, scaler. This is not sharp. It's not like uh, used for uh, a, a fish bone or anything. You really could not saw with this. You can rub your hand across it. It's really a scaling blade. And then uh, you have the uh, nice clip blade on there. And it's a really nice clip blade. And really good lines going on with it and everything. And well, it's, about the closest thing you're going to find in a toothpick uh, in this lineup because, well, they made the fish knife instead of the toothpick. However, the cool thing about this is, well, one of the cool things about this is, is they left off the uh, the shield. I like the fact that they left off the shield on this one. I don't know why they did, but I'm glad they did. But that's not the, uh, the cool thing that I was really going to talk to you about. The cool thing is, is... I do have a queen toothpick in winter bottom, and I'm going to compare that one to this one. And I got to tell you, you're going to kind of be blown away by the differences between the two. And here we have it. This is an older queen USA made uh, toothpick in their winter bottom jig bone. And you can see the differences in the jigging right away. And you can also see that the winter bottom jig out of China, while it looks good, you know, like this, once you see it next to the older queen winter bottom jig bone, it's like, wow, that is pathetic. And I really like this, but... Which do you like more? I mean, let's face it. And this one just has uh, some beautiful deep gouges in there. I mean, this really looks like stag at first, but it isn't. It's their winter bottom jig bone. And you see how that uh, wonderful milky color in that uh, bone is and everything. And the way it is just done. And then the dark grooves in there. It is a, it's a beautiful knife. And then you've got the blade opening up there. And you see it right there. Much cooler blade. The lines on that blade are much nicer. Now, I would have much liked uh, a longer uh, powder horn on these knives, but this is the typical powder horn that you see on a queen knife. You notice this one is also a short powder horn. That's the way queen knives always were done. Um, there you have uh, And you see that Queen Titusville PA. Then uh, other side, nothing. And you see the blade edge there. This is their uh, number 20, Queen Cutlery number 20. That was their toothpick knives. And uh, you can see there's a big difference in uh, winter bottom jig out of China for Queen and the winter bottom jig that used to be done by the Queen Cutlery Company in Titusville, Pennsylvania. So there you have a big difference for the uh, two for Tuesday. If you were to compare those two, I, I think we all know uh, which one looks better and which one is nicer. This one also has, uh, I believe this is in D2 tool steel. Um, this one in 440C, uh, so it's not bad steel. Um, but otherwise you can see the difference uh, just in the way those two bones look. Just amazing. Also, uh, what what the heck? Let's do another comparison. 
still kind of a two for Tuesday. Now we have a Queen City, I believe this is in the uh, Honey Amber Jig Bone. Uh, you got the corset shield going on, and this is their fish knife. Notice uh, the difference in the bolsters and everything, not much of a difference. You can see the difference in the bone though. The, the quality of the bone is markedly better on the uh, the old Titusville USA ones. And then uh, if we get these blades open, here's the uh, the scaling blade. This scaling blade actually has an edge to it. Uh, so you could use it to possibly cut through bone. You still have the bottle opener and you have the uh, hook remover at the end there. Let's Look at those two blades side by side. See the difference there? Yeah. The the side view is not much different, but uh, the build uh, the build quality is different. Uh, the fact that this one has a bit of an edge, you have a, a much more pronounced uh, hook remover. The bottle opener portion is about the same. And obviously, the uh, main blade profile of the two clip blades is totally different. This is more of a long clip, whereas this one is almost like a skinning blade. The way that blade uh, is cut and drops. Much longer clip. Both of them have a nice flat grind going though. And this one is uh, Queen City. I believe this one is using uh, their 420 high carbon steel that uh, Queen used to make. So steel wise, the uh, the one out of China probably has a slightly better steel, but the finish on this one is so much better. There's no doubt about it. And there we have it. Um, oops, this one was made in uh, 2013. Well, and this one was made in 2023, so 10 years apart. What a difference 10 years makes. In any case, I thought I'd show you that. Uh, I know as two for Tuesdays go, I probably broke a few rules here, but still, uh, do you want to just see these two knives? Or did you kind of like seeing the comparison of these two knives or just the difference in the uh, fish knives from... Uh, Queen USA versus Queen China. It's a good thing that um, Queen has come back to the United States. It's something that I was hoping for for the longest time. I'm glad Smoky Mountain Knife Works has brought it back. I have not picked up a, uh, a USA made Queen yet, but uh, I will be doing it as soon as they get a pattern that I'm truly interested in. Um, I'm not just going to buy it simply because it's made in the United States. I want to buy a pattern that I normally collect. In any case, I uh, thought you would enjoy this and uh, we'll stick around. I'll throw on some slides of uh, comparing these knives so you can see it a little bit better. Talk to you again soon.
let me take just a second to thank you once again for dropping by and spending a few minutes here at Knife Chats with Tobias. I really do appreciate it, and I do appreciate any comments that you leave. So please uh, remember to give me that thumbs up, and also don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you'll know when the next episode is up and running. Thanks again for dropping by. Really do appreciate your time here.